Let me show you what this bad boy can do. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Titanium Man Garage. And today we're gonna rebuild the transmission on this 2015 Polaris Scrambler 1000. As you see here, if you saw my previous video, I had a snapped chain, so I ordered the chain and the bottom silence chain as well. I got everything taken out. And uh, if you do this, make sure you clean the whole inside of the cases because when the chain snapped, I found little tiny chunks of chain and metal in there. So I basically stripped everything out and now I'm gonna show you how to put it back together. All right guys, I'm gonna start building this. Um, I like to use uh, assembly oil or uh, any kind of oil to get everything lubed up while I'm doing it. Um, this is gonna to get to be the tricky part because we've got this gear. This little guy slides out, slides in and moves up and down. I have to get the silent sheen on both of these guys and get this in all at the same time. So, see the chain in here, and also these grooves mesh together up on top. Hope you guys can see that. So I'm gonna take a little oil, and where the bearings go, I'm gonna lube that up. Now when I put this in the case, they're in the shift part, right here where my thumb is. You have to line that fork up with this shift hole. It goes in the groove. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put my shift water in there right away too, just so it's in place. So this will be a little bit of a trick. I think I can do it. <laughs> so I also have to put my shift fork in there. And uh, what nice thing about this transmission is there's a pin. It just pulls right out. And then you can put the shift fork in. And then, once again, that is a little nubby that goes in that groove in the circle and the shifter. I'll get a close up later on. And you also have your parking brake with a little spring on it that pulls out with a pin. And hopefully, I didn't go too far already because that has to go down. Yep. I should have put that in at the same time, so I'm going to have to pick up that rope. And this is the little knob on the shifter I was talking about. I'm going to pull that back out and get this underneath here.
when you shift your uh, lever in the park, this little guy kicks out and locks this in the gear. To kind of explain this to you a little bit better, let me move this over so you can see it now. Now that I've got that assembled, also keep in mind you have uh, shims and you don't want to lose those. Like uh, this right here, it came with a shim that goes on there. I'll go ahead and install that right away. This actually goes to your clutch. This is your main drive gear off the engine. Up the back side, hooks up to your engine and it spins. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in next. Grab a little more oil. Also might help if you grab a 2x4 because this shaft is actually pushing out, which I'm going to do next. Kind of keep everything propped up. Yeah, now you can't see it. Alright, now you can see everything. Shift lever. This is your... Uh, where your centrifugal clutch goes. Okay, so now if you remember the chain on here was broken. So I got myself a new chain. And then this part will go in next. And that goes in that hole. I'm gonna grab a little more oil. I got assembly lube here, I could use that too. Oh, almost forgot. There is a plate that goes over here, which I'm going to do next. <clears throat> Two screws, and I'm going to put a little Loctite on there. I'm going to put a little Loctite on both of them. You only need a little. So. So I've rebuilt a couple different transmissions, uh, mostly like the uh, Scramblers, the like the Scrambler 400s. Uh, I've done a couple 500 uh, Scrambler Magnums. I haven't done a like a 2000 Polaris transmission yet. T30. Good. I think I might put a little oil on this just so it's uh, good to go once I start it up. Right, 
So I'm going to wrap this around here. The trick is to try to get that around this gear while you're putting the other gear on. Last but least, you've got your front uh, output shaft. You got your seal, you want to make sure you don't damage that. So I'm going to have to lift this up a little bit. Make some room. I had to do that because the bearing didn't shear, uh, clear the chain. transmission. So now I'll just seal up the edges and put the cover on. But before I do that I want to check the shift lever just to make sure I've got everything assembled right, make sure it shifts into all the gears properly before I assemble it. So that should be park. See how that pushed out. Okay, we're good. That's how you assemble a 2015 Polaris Scrambler 1000 transmission. There's really not much to it. It's just a bunch of gears and chains when you really think about it. Just kind of keep an eye on how you dissemble everything when you take this part apart and put it back together the same way. I suggest looking at a manual because if you take this apart, something could pop off and then you don't know where it goes. Um, I will probably be double checking my manual just to make sure that I've got this uh, parking lever in the right spot. Other than that, there you have it. All right, so I double checked my manual and I don't know if you come in. So what it says is to put the, the shift or, or the park lever on the side like that and slide that down at the same time. Um, you can see where that sits in and you drop everything in all at once. And then you line everything up with that big round gear. You guys can see that. I know the lighting isn't too hot. So I can't zoom in a little bit more. No. And 
then make sure your spring right here is at the very top so that pin is pushed all the way down so you know it's seated correctly. Okay, and as you can see, I got my surfaces cleaned. I've got my sealer on. I've got the uh, other backside of the case clean and ready to go. So I'm gonna slap this together, but I do have to make sure that this shim does not move. So that's gonna be the tricky part. All right, here goes nothing. So one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lube up the shafts because it seems a little on the sticky side. Alright, I put some uh, oil on the seals so they slide on a little better. Alright, try this one more time. Trying to be careful not to break the seal in here because it seems to want to turn inside out as I'm putting it on. Shim, that's what I was checking for. Making sure my bearings line up. Alright, so I got her all installed, got her shift good. I did put this old belt in temporarily just to make sure everything ran and shift fine. Um, right now I'm going to replace that belt and it's actually pretty easy. Take a 15 millimeter socket, pull this bolt out, and I tell you I wish uh, Wish all these scramblers and sportsmen had this. You pull this bolt out and the sheaves separate. That pulls out and then you can pull the belt out. Right, so pull this all the way out. There's a little washer in there, a couple washers. And it pulls out. And you can get your belt out. Oh. This belt is toast. And check out that belt. <laughs> Nothing to it. It's actually pretty funny. I just started up as a test, throwing sparks off the clutch. It's kind of funny. And now I just ins install the new belt. Make sure you get a Polaris belt. Reverse away, and pull that bolt in, tighten it up, and you're good to go. Well, all right, I got her all finished up. I got my new belt in. I did start it up, and I, I was reading forums on this because I actually was having the same issue. Uh, I would uh, put it into reverse, and I could back up. Everything would work fine, and then it wouldn't shift out of gear. 
Uh, I couldn't shift it to high or low or park or nothing. It was just stuck. So what I ended up doing was I pulled the clutch off. And this is supposed to freewheel. And it's not. It's rusted tight. Um, so I'll probably end up replacing the clutch. Um, this is a non-EBS clutch. So it should spin one direction freely. And the other direction, you know, it should have, uh, the belt should still move a little bit. So what I ended up doing temporarily was I, I grabbed another clutch, that's an EBS clutch, and I threw the uh, spring in and I got it to work. So now everything's freewheeling like it should. But the only problem is the, uh, the clutch I used is actually um, the center part's a, a little bit tighter. So I, I have to order a new clutch to get the right clutch. So it turned out that's what the problem was. The guy originally had the same issue. He was jamming it back in through the gears and he stripped this out, ball crank. Uh, so I had to replace that when I, I rebuilt the transmission. It does shift nice now. But if I were to be in, if I were to be like in low gear right now and want to shift into reverse, it will not shift. So it's not necessarily inside of your transmission. It has a lot to do with your clutches. If your uh, belt is still turning, if your belt is still turning, it's not going to want to shift out of gear. So with the clutch disengaged, I should stop turning that, and then you'd be able to shift into the correct gears. But if your uh, your belt's too tight, like this is, it will not shift through the gears. So I'm gonna have to order a new clutch. Um, this is pretty rusty. I thought about rebuilding it, but I think it's just too far gone. Um, the last guy that owned this thing, when I pulled the, the clutch cover off, I noticed the clutch was seized immediately, so I tried cleaning it up and I threw it back in. But other than that, transmission runs and drives like it should, except for the shifting issue. And once I get my new clutch in, I will have cured my problem. So I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching, and like always, till next time.